guys welcome to another video in the series of coding today we are going to do the problem which is called equal row and column pairs so you're given a zero index n into n integer matrix grid you have to return the number of pairs such that each row and column are equal let's try to take an example to understand suppose this is the grid you have to check how many such pairs are there where the row is equal to column let's take an example let's say this is the row one four four five this is the row two four two two this is the row three one two two this is the row 2422 and so on right so you have to check where the rows are equal to columns for example consider this row 2422 right now consider this column 2422 this column if you note down the values it is 2422 and this row is 2422 right so this row and this column are having equal values so this is one such pair you have to return all such pairs that are going to exist so the brute force approach that comes to our mind is for for example list down each row compare each row with all of the columns right let's say the first row is 3122 i have the first row 3122 i want to compare it with all the columns all the four columns then i take the second row i compare it with again all the four columns i take the third row compare it with all the four columns and so on right so what is the time complexity of the brute force approach you have n rows you are going to compare it with n columns and each comparison takes order of n time complexity because there are n elements right so the brute force time complexity is order of n cube now we want to improve it and we want to optimize the a uh, solution so what we can do instead of comparing each row and each column every time we can rather store the values so for example what i'm going to do i have the first row as 3122 so i'm going to store it right uh next row i have 1445 so i'm going to store it next i have 2422 I am going to store it again. I see two four two two, so I need not store it again. What I can do, I can just keep a count variable. So two four two two occurs twice. So from this, you can guess that we can use a map type data structure to store a number along with the value or the number of times it is occurring. For example, two four two two occurs twice, right? So what is the advantage of storing? Now we have made the row corresponding to the number of times that it is occurring in a map. So now what we can do, we can just iterate over the column. Now I iterate over the column. Okay, let me see this column. This column is three one two two. When I iterate over the column, I note I see the column is three one two two. So I can just check in the map if this column has appeared. I need not compare element by element, right? What I was doing earlier in the brute force approach, I was comparing element by element. The first element three, three is matching with three. Next element one, one is matching with one. Next element two, two is matching with two. Next two, two is matching with two. So I was comparing element by element. Uh, each column and each row what i can do once if i have saved the values i can save some time what i can do i know that the column is 3122 so i can compare this 3122 column with already stored value in the row so let's say the row is 3122 i can see in the map that it is occurring and it is occurring once so to my answer i can add one okay now let me see the next column the next column is 1444 it is nowhere occurring in the map so i know that it is not uh, repeated Next, I can see two four two two is the column value. So I can see it was occurring two times in the map. So to my answer, I can add two because two four two two column matches with two rows, right? You can see that the third and the fourth row, both of them are two four two two, and the third column is two four two two. So we can see that this two four two two column matches with two rows. Already in the map, we have stored two, right? So we can add two. To the answer, we are going to get two pairs, right? And so next, next we see two five two two. Two five two two is not occurring anywhere in the map, so we can just go forward. So we can store it in the map. Now there is just one problem. Um, uh, first of all, let's discuss the time complexity. Then we'll discuss the problem of this approach. So uh, the time complexity is order of n square because you are storing right uh, the values in the map. So just in order of n square, you can just uh, iterate over the values and you can just um. Uh, Build this solution, and what is the space complexity? Space complexity will be order of n because why order of n? Because um, you are going to store these values in the map, right? So that's it. Now, what is the um, problem with this approach? Is let's say I have another column, okay? Let's say I have some some other column, okay? And let's say this column was something like thirty one, and let's say two, okay? And let's say two, something like this, okay? So, uh, if I have such a column, okay. If I have such a column, or let me write rewrite it as zero, thirty-one, and two, and two. Okay. So, the first, uh, you can see that the first row is three one two two, right? And you can see that this column is also three one two two. So, what I mean to say is, you cannot differentiate whether thirty-one. Okay, you cannot differentiate whether the elements were thirty-one two two. 
or the elements were three one two two. You cannot differentiate between both of them, right? If you are storing it in a number format, so it is difficult to differentiate. Even though both of them are different, thirty one is different from three comma one, right? They are not the same. But you will not be able to differentiate using this approach. So what we can do is we can rather uh, instead of storing numbers, we can rather store strings. Okay, and after string we can use a separator. So what we can do, we want to know that three and one are separate elements. So you can use any separator. For example, you can use a comma or you can use any special character. Let's say we can store hash. So what we are going to do instead of storing the characters directly, we can store them like this. We can store hash. Okay, after each character to just ensure that they are separated. Okay. And um, the length, the length of the elements may be too much. That's why we are going to store it in a string, so because string can take values, uh, even even large values, right? But a number, you you may get overflow problem if you store so many numbers. So we can store it in a string, and after each string, we can use a separator so that I know that three hash one hash two hash two is different element compared to thirty one hash two hash. Two and so on, right? So this is a simple logic. Now let's move forward to coding it. Hi guys, I wanted to talk to you about something important today. The frustration of not finding the right job is sometimes too much to handle. If you are a job seeker, then you know what I'm talking about. The pressures of looking for a job and then giving those endless interviews, etc., etc. It bothers people when you have the right skill set, but still it's so difficult to find the right job. But don't worry anymore. With Hirect, it's finally getting easier. It's a direct hiring platform. Here you can directly chat with team leaders and HR managers and get hired. That too without any middlemen. So don't wait anymore. Just try Hirect now. More than hundred and fifty thousand companies are already hiring on Hirect. So to find a job, you don't have to do anything. Just click on the link given in the description box and install the app. Then you have to create a profile by answering a few simple questions. The algorithm of the app will automatically match you with the relevant job profiles. Also, don't worry about data privacy at all because Hirect never shares your personal details with any recruiters without your permission. So just click on the link in the description box and switch to the job that you have always wanted to have with Hirect. Also remember, Hirect hai to direct hai. So let's uh, go forward to writing the code. So what we are supposed to do is we are going to take a map, right? So an ordered map, and corresponding to each string of the row, we are going to um, store how many times the string is occurring, right? So what we are going to do is first we are going to iterate over all the rows of the grid. So let me take that. So for each row in the grid, we have to build the string. So let's say the row is. Uh, the row is three one two two. So what we are supposed to do? We are going to convert this row to first of all a string, and what we are going to do after that? We are going to attach a a special character after each value, right? So the final string is going to be something like this. So this is what I am supposed to do. So I am going to take a function build string that is going to convert my row value to such a thing. What is the use of converting? After this, we can store it in a map. So we can store it in the map. and we can just increment the count whenever we see this again so now let me just take the build string function so this is the build string function it is taking a, a vector as input which is the row it is taking as input and it has to return a string okay so let me declare a string that it has to return let me just call it result so now what we can do we can iterate over each element in the row and um, after iterating over each element in the row we can just build the string right So initially it's just an empty string, and then we can keep adding elements to it. So first of all, we will add elements. So what I can do first, I can convert this element to a string, and I can add it. And after this, I can just add the special character, which is hash. So what this function is doing? This function is doing a very simple thing. It is just converting the row, the row which was three one two two. It is going to add the hash values and it's going to return the string. So this function, after this, it's going to return the result. This is my result, right? And it's going to do the same thing for all the rows, right? Let's say the next row that I have is one four four five, right? So it's going to do the same thing. I have the row one four four five. It's going to add a hash. It's going to add a hash. It's going to add a hash. After each element, it is just adding a hash and Also, what it is doing after this, it will store how many times this row is occurring in the 
in the grid and so on let's say this was occurring two times right let's say this occurring two times so corresponding to this we will store two in the map let's say this was occurring three times so corresponding to this we will store three in the map and so on right so now what i can do after all this is done i can just iterate over the column values so for j equal to zero j less than grid of zero dot size j plus plus and then for int i equal to zero i less than grid dot size i plus plus so what i am doing i am just iterating over the values of the grid column wise so i am going to iterate over column wise and i can just copy these two lines of code so again i can just do the same thing right so i have a string result okay which is initially empty now i am building the same string but i am building it column wise instead of row wise i can do the same thing instead of the element here we have grid of ij that's it so again i am building the string but i am building it column wise so so if i have a column which is 3122 again after this i am building the string and i get it as 3122 right so what i can do after this string is built let's say the string result is equal to this okay so after it is built let's say it is equal to this so i'm i will have to check whether this was occurring in my map so now it's occurring in my map if it is occurring two times i can just add 2 to the answer so let me declare a answer variable and i can just add how many our times this result is appearing in my answer and i can just finally return answer that's it this is the entire logic and by the way i can just run and check if this logic is working let me remove this let's run and see okay let's run again and see there's some compilation error uh so i forgot an semicolon here let me just quickly add it and let's run the code again so it's working let's submit and see if it is getting accepted so it's accepted thank you for being patient and listening thank you guys for watching the video till the end i wanted to add that there is a wonderful platform called hirect on which you can get hired directly and there are no middlemen involved and hirect respects your privacy so you can directly uh, search jobs on hirect platform more than 150000 companies are already there and the link is there in the description box so guys remember hirect hai to direct hai